Hello guys, it's Vieko here and welcome to another video in which I will not cover game 9 of the World Chess Championship between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana because I need decisive games, I need decisive games! But sorry about that. Uh, instead, we're going to take a look at the game 4 of the Women's World Chess Championship between uh, Wagno Katerina and Wenjunju. I have been uh, warned that the correct pronunciation is Wagno and not Wanyo as I spoke in the previous video. Uh, so, if you might remember, uh, this is a, a four-game final of the knockout tournament, and Wagner actually won the second game. The first game was a draw, and in the third game, Wenjun missed, like, several winning chances. He, she was uh, overwhelmingly better, and... Uh, but Katarina Wagner, Wagner managed to escape. So you can only imagine how Ben Jun Ju was feeling before this game. So she now had to win with the black pieces to stay in, in the match. And okay, we'll see what happened in this game. So Wagner uh, played e4 and uh, of course uh, Ben Jun played c5. When you're in a must win situation, you play the Sicilian. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Uh, for those who watch my other videos of follow chess, uh, this Rosalim is pretty trendy these days because some two guys are playing it in their match. So uh, Carson and Caruana have played uh, Bishop b5 in three games. Actually, Caruana played it. So g6, this was also played by Carson. Castling, Bishop g7, Rook e1, e5. And this was all seen in game 5 of the Rook Chess Championship. And if you may recall, uh, the, their Caruana played this wild uh, b4. And Wagner played a3, which is somewhat a curious move. It has a dual purpose. One idea is to prepare b4 advance. And the other idea is to make room for this bishop on a2, because this bishop often goes to c4 in this variation. And then you, it is nice and uh, neatly placed here, because you avoid some knight a5 ideas or whatever. So, okay, but I think the main point is to prepare b4. Knight g e7 and b4. Uh, and here it is very dangerous for black to take this pawn because let's say if he takes... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, b4 wasn't played. b4 is a possibility. Knight c3 was played. But b4 seems more logical. To me, it's actually a theoretical continuation. And after c takes b4, a takes b4. And if now black accepts, knight takes b4, a3, knight bc6, bishop d6, and... Uh, Boyk is quite tied up. White has enormous compensation for the pawn. And this is just one sample line. After I say castling, knight c3, b6, knight d5, bishop b7, and now c4. You know, there are several several threats in this position. It's incredibly hard from, for uh, white to untangle, for black to untangle, and it's hard to even suggest a move for black. If he has to take on d5, it's a catastrophe, and you know, uh, it's it's pretty visible. He's in awful shape here, so that's why they usually play instead of taking the theoretical move is d6. And okay, we have another game. But Wagner played knight c3, which is very much much possible. But I'm not quite sure why she didn't play it immediately instead of playing a3. But okay, it's not the end of the road. This was actually played in some lesser rated games. So, I mean, when I say lesser rated, I mean 2400 level. So, okay. Castling, bishop c4. And now the bishop, if, if black plays knight a5, bishop goes to a2 and uh, black hasn't achieved anything. d6 was played, d3, h6, and now knight d5, a logical move, uh, moving knight away and preparing c3, and then according to the cir circumstances, either d4 and or b4. So this is sort of similar to some variations of the uh, of the uh, Italian game, so they play similar. And uh, Vejun played the uh, king h7, and this is actually exactly what she would like to get out of this game. So she will play f5, and she has these attacking chances on the king side, which is ideal in a must-win situation, even if the attack is objectively unsound. It's hard to meet uh, in practical terms. C3, preparing B4, most probably, and now if F5. And this is perhaps a bit premature, as White's following move demonstrates. But uh, once again, first of all, it's uh, it's easy, it's hard to blame Venjun for missing White's reply, and secondly, it's hard to suggest what Black should play instead. 
Okay, so onward we go. And here Wagner took on f5. Yeah, she could have played before immediately, and it's doubtful whether this is better or not, but okay. It takes f5, and now g takes f5 was played. Uh, probably better is knight takes f5, but then you concede e4 square, and after knight d2, you, you are not, you know, do, do not have this pawn, uh, sorry, random arrows, pawn push on the king side, and yeah, when June played more logical, but she missed one detail here. She didn't play, she could have played 95 here. And of course, black can take because takes, takes, and say now either bishop h6, bishop g5, and this bishop is pinned, and black is just lost. Or if he goes king h8, then, you know, I think this is just double check and mate, because you can't, you know, when king is a double check, he has to move, but here he can't move. So knight g5 would be probably have to meet with. So for instance, if king h8, then you play queen h5, you're threatening here and you have the enormous initiative. And king g6 is probably the best, but it is ugly because it gets in the way of this file. And I think that after knight f3, black doesn't have anything better but king h7. Okay, you probably would have played that, but yeah, it's clear that this is not ideal situation. But okay, uh, Lagno avoided that for Lagno for some curious reason. She played before knight g6, bringing pieces to the king side, and now b5. This is probably debatable whether you should push this knight here, but okay, knight a5, bishop a2, bishop e6, and now queen a4. The problem is that this position is not objectively that bad for white, but it's very hard to play. You don't have a clear plan what you should be doing, whereas black is simply going to gank his pieces on this side of the board and checkmate you. So, yeah, probably here queen e2 was a bit more precise, keeping the queen on this side of the board, but okay. b6, bishop d2, rook g8 was played, bringing the rook to the open file, rook a d1, just trying to develop and hinting at potential d4 break, well, although it's not realistical. Uh, queen d7, and now knight hs h4 was played, which is the losing move, but once again, what do you play as white? The edge suggests weird looking king h1, which, yeah, I think it's very difficult for a human to play. But uh, knight h4 has a concrete problem, which Venjun once again didn't exploit. She could have played c4 here, cutting the queen of the defense of this knight, and okay, once you take here, you don't automatically recapture the knight, but you take with the bishop here. And suddenly this bishop is eyeing this g2 pawn, and let's say d takes c4, you just go either to b7 or to e6, and now let's say knight h4 and uh, bishop f6, and you know, you're having a dream position for black. Once again, random arrow, sorry. So yeah, this file is open, these pawns are coming in, this queen is boxed in, this pawn is weak, this bishop is doing nothing. Okay, he will get rerouted to be one. But in general, this is very poor cool for white. Close to lost, probably. Okay, uh, Benjun played bishop h8, uh, moving the bishop and opening the g file. Uh, knight takes, rook takes, this was the point of the previous move. Queen h4, bringing the queen to the king side. Rook a g8 doubling here, g3, queen f7 bringing the queen into attack, now c4, attacking this knight possibly, and here bishop f6 was played, and this is probably, can be attributed to the nerves. Uh, f4 is actually a very interesting possibility, which leads to some fascinating variations. The best for white is to take this knight, and after black recaptures, uh, bishop b1 should be played, and the beautiful point of this variation is revealed only a couple of moves later. So let's say if black plays logical move uh, rook g4, you play d4, discovering the attack, the check on the king. You can't really interpose. So, because uh, I think this works for, for, for white. So king g7, queen e7. Bishop takes d5, and now queen d6, a beautiful move, and you're suddenly stuck. You can go to e6 because white takes, and if you go here, then rook e5 is coming and you're getting crushed. So, yeah, hard to hard, hard position to play. This, this king is really preventing black groups from attacking you. 
but it's interesting to compare this position so uh, visualize this position here there is queen d6 and now compare this position with the bishop on d2 and knight on a5 which is this position now black has knight c4 and he holds e5 is defended and queen is attacked and actually black wins here so yeah okay but apart from f4 here there was also knight b7 just trying to get knight here and yeah black probably has the initiative once again what does white play here but okay bishop f6 was played which is a bit of a mistake because you know you allow the exchange of this dark square bishop which okay it was doing nothing and this knight was strong but it gives uh, white some time to because it distracts rooks from the g file so knight takes f6 rook takes f6 Ob obviously you don't want to take with the queen and exchange queens only a madman would exchange queens in this position rook takes f4 was played uh, preventing f4 by black which is very important and also is restricting this bishop uh, rook g4 attacking the queen queen h3 rook fg6 doubling on the g file and here white needed only just one precise move to keep everything under control if lagno played queen f1 she's protecting here and yeah uh, the point is that this sacrifice is now nowhere because the queen is not on g7 and even if it were it's debatable maybe if the queen was on h4 it would be dangerous but that's also debatable and if you don't take on, uh, on g3 then after let's say queen g7 rook e2 and yeah, it's hard to suggest what, what black plays. So once again, the sacrifice is covered. And if he tries h5 going for h4, then you can take here and you can play bishop c3. So you are already losing control here. And I'm no, not sure if you play h4, probably he has bishop f4 and he's keeping it all under control. So black probably has to try something else, but maybe once again rerouting the knight or something, but or maybe take taking here and just playing that position. But okay, it's not easy. Rook f1 was played, which doesn't yet spoil anything in in objective sense, but it makes white's task way more difficult. So queen g7, just ganging on this file, and here white played the losing move. Losing move. She panicked here and she played king h1. Uh, queen h5 is a very serious try uh, because now you don't allow the sacrifice and you don't allow the bishop to get rerouted re and then probably you can proceed with some rook f2, rook e1, rook f2 or something but yeah it's very difficult move to make here and I think king f2 I'm actually not sure it just popped my mind now but I think that yeah you, you can't play that because there is queen b2 check, yeah, okay, I missed that initially. And on d2 you get knight f4, yeah, okay. I should have checked, but okay, king h1 was played, the losing move, and once again, to prove how important nerves in chess are. And here, bishop c8, just backward move, trying to get the bishop here and giving this deadly check. And yeah, pro objectively, even queen, rook takes g3 was winning, but this is way more human and simple and now after queen h5 there is nothing better basically because if you try to defend uh, no if you get the rook the king back you he takes here if you try to defend with the rook you get this check and once again this you need to play this and then probably black also takes here and yeah this is just you know because of the pain you're you're close you're lost just just dead lost even if if it's not forcing there are probably simple solutions but yeah this obviously if we just takes he's probably winning so okay and after queen h5 uh bishop b7 check king g1 black won with the rook sacrifice automatic move in this position h takes g3 rook takes g3 uh king f2 and now rook g2 check and here white resigned because after King g3, he gets queen g3. Where does he? Queen g3, rook f3, and probably g takes f4 with the checkmate. Ah, yeah, that's, that's the checkmate. And if he goes, she goes king e1, then the queen g3, rook here, and this is the checkmate. 
So yeah, okay. I mean, objectively, the game is of much lower quality than the games between Caruana and Carson. But you know, this is this 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 was very very nice attack by Black and pretty 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 wild game, especially considering that uh, you know it was played in a must win position. And I think people played about Juve and June that she 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 has extremely strong nerves, and I think this game demonstrated this the best because. Yeah, to play such a game in, in such a situation is, is unbearable. And I think in general that women chess is often quite dynamic and interesting and it needs to be more publicized in my honest opinion. But okay, that's just me. So yeah, anyway, anyway guys, that was the game. Uh, I think they played the tiebreak now, you know, like a rapid tiebreak and then blitz. Uh, I'm not sure about the regulations, but you can check them in the on the website of the organizer Ugra Chess. I will link the uh, link uh, below the video. And yeah, if you like the video, you're welcome to subscribe, of course, to share it with your friends or your enemies. And uh, you can also watch my previous two videos that they are given in the left hand side of the corner of the screen. And yeah, that's all for today. Next time I promise I will I will analyze the game between the 10 between Magnus and Fabiano, but yeah, I think I first need to understand it. And probably even when I will shoot the video, I won't understand it. But okay. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Goodbye.